We had an absolutely fantastic time during our three-week stay in Japan. While there, we stayed at six different hotels in various cities. Today, we are going to share information, a room tour, and our impressions about each hotel. Keep watching to the end for the most amazing hotel. We'll give you one guess which one it is. Our first hotel in Japan was Hotel My Stays Premier Hamamatsuko in Tokyo. My Stays is a chain of hotels you'll find throughout Japan. They have a few different brands, with the Premier being a slightly more upscale hotel compared to the standard brand. What we liked. Overall, this hotel was comfortable and provided everything we needed. Its close proximity to Hamamutsuko Station made it easy to get around the city. The room was clean, comfortable, and had very handy amenities such as a mini fridge and tea kettle. The staff was friendly and spoke good English. Nearby, you had Tokyo Tower as well as a lot of restaurants and cafes. What we didn't like. The location isn't ideal. The hotel is situated in a business district in Tokyo and there were not a lot of things to do and see nearby. The hotel has a small restaurant with a breakfast buffet, but it is an extra charge and was not a very impressive meal. The price for this eight night stay was 154,500 yen or about 990 euros. We rate this hotel a 3.5 out of five. After several days in Tokyo, we traveled to Kyoto, where we spent four nights at Sakura Terrace, the gallery. This hotel wound up being one of our favorites from the trip. What we liked. The location is perfect, with the hotel being located less than a 10-minute walk from Kyoto Station. There's also a 7-Eleven next door for any of your snack and beverage needs. The open atrium style of the hotel was very inviting, and you could visit the outdoor lounge every evening for a free welcome beverage. The Japanese Western style hotel restaurant is both convenient and delicious. There are free on-site laundry facilities, a gym, and an onsen. The room had all of the basic amenities, including a mini fridge. What we didn't like, the rooms are very small, especially when you had to manage two people and four suitcases. Also, there is only a single elevator that services all five floors. The price for this four night stay was 57,818 yen or about 370 euros. We rate this hotel a four out of five. On our way to Osaka, and on the advice of a friend, we decided to spend a night in Hiroshima. To make things easier, we decided to book a hotel in close proximity to the train station, the Royal Park Hotel Hiroshima Riverside. What we liked. As we mentioned, the proximity to Hiroshima Station made it convenient for us. It's less than a kilometer away. We booked an economy twin room and wound up with a window facing the river. The room was very comfortable and well appointed, again with all the required amenities. The breakfast buffet is included in the price of your stay. What we didn't like. Our room was on the small side and the bathroom had an odd window with blinds. While this made for a fun way to prank your wife, it was just an odd thing to have in the room. The breakfast buffet, while free, was not good. 
Outside of the train station, there's not a lot close to the hotel, so you need to walk quite a bit in order to get a train or bus to get around the city. The price for our one night stay was 14,791 yen, or about 95 euros. We rate this hotel a three out of five. After Hiroshima, we traveled to Osaka, where we split our stay between a hotel in the heart of the city and one at Universal Studios. For the first couple days in Osaka, we stayed at Hotel Monterey La Frere. What we liked. At a kilometer from Osaka Station, the location is fantastic. The area is filled with shops and restaurants, both above and below ground. You can easily grab a train or bus from the area to move about this city. The hotel feels very luxurious and has a lot of amenities, including a laundry room and an onsen for guests. It's a tall building and with our room being on the 23rd floor, we had absolutely fantastic views. Our room was spacious and very comfortable. What we didn't like. The block that the hotel is situated on with drunk partiers and the maid cafe nearby didn't feel the safest. The laundry room was small and coin operated. You may have to strategically plan when to do your laundry. Additionally, the hotel onsen did not allow people with tattoos, therefore we couldn't take part. The price for this two night stay was 39,072 yen or about 250 euros. We rate this hotel a four out of five. For the second part of our stay in Osaka, we had two days at Universal Studios. The park is located on the other side of the city from Osaka Station, so it made sense for us to move to a closer hotel. As it happens, we moved to literally the closest you could stay to the entrance of the park, the Parkfront Hotel at Universal Studios Japan. What we liked. Obviously, the location was perfect. When you step out of the hotel, it's a one minute walk to enter the park grounds. If you exit on the other side of the hotel, you are right in the middle of Universal City Walk with all its shops and restaurants. The room was absolutely huge. We had tons of space. We also had wraparound windows giving us fantastic views of City Walk, especially in the evening when everything is lit up. Breakfast was included in the price of our stay at a Kala Buffet and was by far the best breakfast buffet we experienced in Japan. What we didn't like. The rooms and hallways felt a bit dated and could have used some maintenance. Other than that, we don't really have any complaints about our stay here. The price for this two night stay in a superior city view room was 42,300 yen, or about 270 euros. We rate this hotel a 4.5 out of 5.
Okay, we saved the best for last. For our final destination in Japan, we traveled back to Tokyo for four amazing days at Tokyo Disney Resort. As we are massive Disney fans, and the fact that this is likely a once in a lifetime trip, we decided to go a bit bougie and booked a Beauty and the Beast themed room at Disneyland Hotel. Best decision ever. What we liked, location. Are, are we noticing a theme here? The hotel is situated directly outside of the gates to Disneyland Park, as well as the monorail station. The hotel is absolutely gorgeous. The photos you see online do not do it justice. The lobby is expansive and beautiful. There is also a lounge where you can grab drinks and a small bite to eat. You can't help but geek out when you enter the room. There are elements and Easter eggs everywhere. From the wallpaper, to the furniture, to the stool themed after Sultan from the film, the theming is so well done. Even after being in the room for a while, we were still discovering little details we hadn't seen before. Then there's the amenities you can keep. While they are not Beauty and the Beast themed, there are several hotel themed amenities that you can stash away in your bags and are then replenished daily. Toothbrushes, toiletry kits, slippers, and foldable bags to name a few. what we didn't like. Absolutely nothing. Well, if, if we let ourselves be a little bit nitpicky, a couple of little things. The beds were a bit on the firm side, and when we ordered room service, the wait was two plus hours. They did call us to double check that we were okay with the wait. The price for this four night stay was 330,000 yen, or about 2,115 euros. We rate this hotel a five out of five. When planning a once-in-a-lifetime trip to a place like Japan, it's important to plan your stays carefully and pick hotels that work best for you. This planning really paid off for us as all of our hotels really complemented our needs in each location. If we had the chance to go back, the one thing we would want to try is a more traditional Japanese hotel, Ryokan. We played it safe this trip with hotels with standard beds as we were going for my marathon and I have back issues. Have you stayed at any of these hotels or are you thinking about booking them? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please consider clicking the like button below. And while you're there, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future adventures.